So how many of you are able to hear the female speaker in the middle of that background noise? About half of you. How about now? It's always great to be a Miami hurricane. Much clearer now, right? So this is what our ears are doing all the time. They're always on, and what they're doing is they're suppressing that background noise when we're in a restaurant or in a crowded situation so that we can actually hear the person we want to focus on, that friend that we want to listen to. Or when we go to a music concert and we want to listen to all those different organs, all those different instruments, and the different frequencies. The brain and the auditory system is actually suppressing that background noise so that we can focus on our, our uh, speech of interest. Unfortunately, there's a lot of noise all around us, and that noise is causing damage to our hearing. So we know about construction workers, members of our armed forces or the military, who have a significant amount of hearing loss, right? But what's more alarming is that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States reports that 24% of all adults and 17% teenagers have a significant amount of noise-induced hearing loss. If you think about it, this is 40 to 50 million people, Americans, who have hearing loss in one or both of their ears. And the impact of this on our society is huge. Right? There is a lot of burden being borne because of loss of productivity in terms of health care costs. In fact, CDC reports that $123 billion could be saved if we could only treat or prevent 20% of hearing loss. Unfortunately, we don't live in a quiet world. There is noise all around us in terms of different polluting agents, such as a noise in, on the street or music concerts jet engines. These are always affecting our hearing. So before I move forward, let's talk about our hearing organs. I've been working in this field for about 17 years, studying how we keep balance, how we hear, and creating devices to interface with these, uh, with these organs. We have two cochlea, one in each ear, that allow us to convert sound energy into electrical pulses that are sent through the auditory nerve to the brain, where the brain interprets these as sounds. The cochlea itself has thousands, tens of thousands of cells, sensory cells known as auditory hair cells, that actually sense the sound, convert it into electrical energy that are sent to the brain by tens of thousands of nerve fibers. Unfortunately, the noise that's all around us is continuing to damage those sensory structures all the time. And we may not realize it until much later, the damaging effects of that noise. When patients go to a clinic, majority of their hearing will come out to be normal. They will report in their measurements of being normal hearing. However, when they are placed in a difficult situation, such as being in a restaurant or in a crowded environment, they cannot listen to the person of interest. And this is what scientists call hidden hearing loss, which is a direct result of noise-induced damage to those cochlear structures. My lab, which is part of the Department of Biomedical Engineering in College of Engineering, and of the Ear Institute at the Miller School of Medicine, is working with engineers and physicians to try and find solutions for this noise-induced damage and the trauma. And we think we're onto something really remarkable. And we're learning from current research that is already ongoing in our lab. Many of you know about cochlear implants. These are devices that are surgically implanted into the cochlea to replace artificially hearing in deaf people. They are remarkably successful. There are more than 500,000 implants worldwide, including in adults as well as in children. And they've been very successful. Unfortunately, the insertion, the surgical insertion itself of these cochlear implants can damage those sensory structures through inflammation. So as we were finding a solution for that inflammation, we thought about the most common thing that we think about when we have inflammation. When we have an injury to our elbow or to our knees, we use ice or cooling, right? We call this therapeutic hypothermia. 
Therapeutic hypothermia is actually used in cases of traumatic brain injury, in concussion, in stroke all the time for protecting the nervous structures or the neurons. And we actually built a device that can be inserted right next to the cochlea during a cochlear implant surgery to cool it to the levels required by therapeutic hypothermia. And what we found in the lab in rodents was actually quite remarkable. This is the healthy cochlea on the left. When we surgically implanted cochlear implants at animals, you actually see inflammation causing a significant loss of those sensory hair cells over time. However, if we surgically implanted the animals with cochlear implants, we could actually see complete preservation of those sensory structures. So we thought, why not use this idea of cooling or therapeutic hypothermia for reducing or preventing noise-induced hearing loss? So we started some experiments, and we looked at animals uh, that received exposures to really loud noises at the levels of jet engines for two hours. And what we found is that their hearing levels significantly worsen after this, this damage. However, if we provided these animals their, and their ears a little bit of cooling using therapeutic hypothermia, we could start to see that their hearing levels will start to recover. What we wanted to really try and do was apply this in the cases of noise that we hear every day, such as when we go to concerts. So we took animals and we exposed them to loud noises at the levels of a concert, a rock concert, for two hours. And what we found is that, in fact, just the next day, their hearing worsened. However, if we provided therapeutic hypothermia or cooling after the noise, we could see a recovery in that hearing thresholds. And that continued for a month. So at a month later, we could continue to see a certain amount of damage in hearing of the animals from group one. However, those that received the cooling, they had hearing that returned almost to the normal levels. So we think this is a really remarkable solution for protecting our ears against the noise. We're using the hypothermia or cooling as a tool now to understand more about the mechanisms. How does noise actually damage hearing? And how does therapeutic hypothermia or cooling actually preserve those sensory structures within the cochlea? We're learning about how much cooling is sufficient and necessary. We're learning about how to apply the cooling, when to apply it, and what can we protect. And what we are doing is we're using that scientific knowledge to build the devices and therapies that can be translated to humans to preserve our hearing for generations to come so that we can continue safely taking flights. Listen to every single instrument when we go to a concert or attend football games. Thank you. Thank you.